Hey what's up guys, Bushan here from our boy Geek Expert and it has now been almost 2 weeks since I'm using the Redmi Note 4 as my daily driver. It is not a full review by any means because you can find it all over the internet. In fact, this is my 14 days with the Redmi Note 4. Talking about the build and design, this phone is made up of an unibody metal design, which really feels premium to hold in hand. And the new touch of adding 2.5D curved glass and the chamfered edges is a really good move by Xiaomi. And due to that curved edges design, your hand will simply glide through the edges of the phone, and it feels amazing. But everything has its cons. Due to this metal design, this device becomes slippery as hell, so better be careful or just simply slide in a case for more protection. Taking a look at the display, it has a 1080p IPS LCD panel which is also quite decent and performs quite well in sunlight as well. This is a 3GB RAM variant with 32GB of internal storage. And a thing to note here is it contains a hybrid SIM slot. That means you can either enter two SIMs or one SIM and a SD card up to freaking 256GB, which is not a joke by any means. This baby rocks in a Snapdragon 625 chipset, which is a octa core processor, clocked at 2.2 GHz. Moving on to the GPU, it has an Adreno 505 GPU. In day to day usage, this combo gave me no lag whatsoever. Talking about the gaming performance, and to be honest with you guys, I am not a gamer by any means, so I have not installed any sort of game on this device to test this baby out, but I am quite sure that it won't disappoint you in gaming as well. With that being said, it has a 13 megapixel primary camera with an aperture of f2.0, which performs quite well under good lighting conditions. But when it comes to low light, it gets a bit grainy and hunts quite a lot for focus. Taking a look at the video department, it can shoot up to 1080p with both front and rear facing camera, which is okay, but still no 4K? Ugh. Anyways, coming back to the camera, it has a face detection autofocus or PDAF which is quite good but still not comparable with the laser autofocusing system and there is also no sign of OIS by Xiaomi. So the videos may come out tad bit shaky. Now here comes the selfie part. Talking about the selfie, it has a 5 megapixel front camera with an aperture of f2.0 which is again good in good lighting conditions but in low light it can easily produce grainy pictures. Here are some samples, so have a look. And now let's talk about user interface. So if you have used any Xiaomi device till now, then the UI will feel familiar to you. MIUI 8 which is based on Android Marshmallow is really buttery smooth on this device. And some extra features like dual apps, second space etc is just icing on the cake. As there is pretty less bloatware which can also be uninstalled, I have no complaints with Xiaomi regarding the UI. As I was using the Redmi Note 4 before as well, so I had no problem getting used to the UI of the Redmi Note 4. Taking a look at the I.O., on bottom it has got a micro USB port for charging, which is not fast charge enabled. Sad. Alongside we have a secondary noise cancellation microphone and lastly two speaker grills. Oh yeah, I almost forgot that the speaker grills are also quite loud and so you won't have any problems in hearing music and stuff. They are even louder than the one found on the Redmi Note 3. Moving on to the top, there is an IR blaster, 3.5mm headphone jack and a primary microphone. On the right, we have the power key and the volume rockers, which are quite easy and clicky to use. On back, we have 30 megapixel primary camera with a fingerprint sensor. And on front, we have the earpiece, sensors and a 5 megapixel secondary camera on the top. And on the bottom, we have the touch capacitive keys, for instance, which are backlit. That's all good, but what about the battery performance, man? And my god, the 4100mAh battery on this device is a beast. On a normal usage, you can get easily up to 8 to 9 hours of screen on time, which is insane and not normal by any means. As there is no fast charging in this phone, it gets full charge from 0 to 100% in or about 3 to 3.5 hours with the sublight charger. Now, here comes the main point the price. Xiaomi has killed it. The variant I am holding right now, which is the 3GB RAM and 32GB internal storage, just costs freaking 11,000 INR, which is amazing. And this wraps it up guys, as I told you this is not a full review by any means, it was just my experience of what I felt about this device on 14 days of usage. Please let me know how you felt the video was in the comment section down below. With that being said, I am Metal Boy Geek Expert and I am signing out.